Hi students, today we will talk about the anatomy and morphology of a vertebrate animal, the rabbit. Vertebrate animal, rabbit. So it actually belongs to or it represents the cordyx, that is the vertebrates, and the group mammalia. You know, the mammals are the highest group in the animal kingdom. They show advancement over other animal groups. Now, rabbit is a representative of a mammal. It is being placed under the taxonomic position given here. So, it is coming under the phylum chordate. Phylum chordate. Animals with not a cord or back. Subphylum vertebrate. Subphylum vertebrate. Having a backbone in the form of vertebral column. Coming into the class mammalia because of the possession of the mammary glands by the mammals, particularly the females, possession of mammary glands. Order just lagomorpha. Lagomorpha. Then genus that is orectolagus. Orectolagus. The species cuniculus. Cuniculus. So this is all is polite to the taxonomic position, the chordate coming into the vertebrae because of the presence of vertebral column, possession of memory glands, hence included under that is class mammalia, order lagomorpha, the genus name orectolagus and the species name cuniculus. Now, first let us talk about the external morphology. You know, the rabbit is a very timid animal, very shy animal, timid and a gentle animal. Actually, it is moving by leaping movement and lives in burrows mostly. It is being distributed all over the world. It is a herbivorous animal. It is a herbivorous animal. Herbivorous animal. Feeding on grass, the vegetables like carrot, lettuce, turning, etc. That's why it's called as a herbivorous animals. Now regarding the morphology, let's take uh, the various structures related to the external appearance. Number one, size, shape and the coloration. So what is the nature of the shape? What is the nature of the shape? The animal is elongated and cylindrical. Elongated and symmetric. That is the nature of the shape. What is the nature of the size? So normally the male and females are equal in size. Equal in size. Having a length of 45 cm and weighing about 2.25 kg. This is the weight and then also that is what we have the length. Then the coloration. White to black, color white to black, or and white in color, black and white, white to black or black and white. So that is about the shape, size, and color. What are the divisions of the body? The body is divided into the following divisions. One, the divisions of the body. One, the head. This is number one. Number two, that is the trunk. Trunk. Number three, actually we have number two we can say also neck because a short neck is present on the mammals. So we will take neck also. Then the third one trunk, the last one tail. The last one tail. These are all the different parts of the body. Head, neck, trunk, and tail. Now let's take the head region. What are the parts present in the head region of the animal? The head region of the animal. Now head is normally ovoid and flattened. Ovoid and flat. And anteriorly it is produced into a truncate snout. Now this is what is called the snout. The snout region. 
This is what is called a truncate snout. Truncate snout. See, the snout is normally cleft. Even there is a disease in the case of young ones because of a syndrome. What is called plateau syndrome yesterday. Cleft pattern. Hair lip condition. Now the upper part, that is upper lip, is cleft in nature just below the nose. Hence called truncate snout. Now what are the structures present in the head region? Now it has a pair of external nostrils on the snout. A pair of external nails or nostrils. Now this one external external nostrils or we can say external nails. So on the top of the snout we have external nostrils or external nerves through which only the air is entering into the respiratory passage. This is number one. Then there is a mouth. There is a mouth. There is a mouth with upper and lower jaws bounded by lips. Upper and lower lips. This is the next one. Then a pair of eyes. Now we have the eye reach pair of eyes. Then presence of a pair of elongated large ear pinna. Ear pinna. Ear pinna. So we have the eyes, ear pinna. Just we see that one, the snow which is truncated in nature, a mouth with upper and lower jaws bounded by lips. That is upper and lower lips. So this is all the structures present in the head region. These are all the structures present in the head region. Now we have to go for the next one. Neck. A short neck is present connecting the head with the trunk. Now this is what we have the neck. A short neck is present connecting the head with what is called the neck. The neck is followed by the trunk. The neck is followed by the trunk. Now this is the trunk region. The trunk is divided into two parts, anterior thorax, anterior thorax and posterior abdomen, anterior thorax and posterior abdomen. Now in the case of female, on the ventral side, for just actually feeding the young ones, there are four to five teeth or nipples. Nipples, four to five teeth or nipples are present in the case of female on the ventral side between the thorax and the abdomen. Between the thorax and abdomen. That is about the teeth. Let's go further, some other components. Now the trunk has a pair of four limbs and a pair of hind limbs. Now this is the hind limb. The hind limb is normally longer in nature. Then we have the four limb or four leg. Four limb or four leg. Now each limb has pentadactyl digits. Pentadactyl digits. Pentadactyl digits. That means there are five digits. And the digits are ending with the claws. So, clawed digits are present in each limb. There are five digits, hence the name pendatactyl limbs or pendatactyl digits. The meaning for that one, we have five digits. So, we can say pendatactyl limbs or pendatactyl digits. The digits are ending with the claws. Now, this is the claw. The digits are ending with the claws. So, that's about the limbs. Now, we have to go further about other things. At the posterior end of the abdomen is present and is just below the tail. Just below the tail, we have anus is present. Now in the case of female, there is a transverse slit and that slit represents what is called vulva. This is nothing but external genital organ, genitalia of the female. So in the case of female, a transverse slit is present just actually for eliminating, for receiving what is called the sperm 
it is nothing but the external genital organ external genitalia together called as vulva that is in the case of female now in the case of male there is a penis in the ventral side just below the tail in the ventral side of the anus we can see in the ventral side just in the ventral side of the anus we have penis in the case of male so this is in the case of female this is in the case of male now a pair of scrotal sacs are present in male scrotal sacs one of the peculiar characters of mammals scrotal sacs enclosing the testis enclosing the testis so the testis are large in scrotal sacs in the case of male and also we have penis in the ventral side of the anus and female we have the aperture vulva so these are all the structures present just normally that is in the ventral side vulva penis scrotal sacs nothing but the testis etc other things and also a pair of hind limbs and a pair of that's fore limbs the hind limbs are actually longer than compared to the fore limbs they are short and both are used for the leaping movement of the animal then the next one intermit intermit that is skin it is outer covering of the body now the skin is actually provided with the hairs now what are the derivatives of the skin the skin has the following derivatives claws nails hairs these are all the derivatives along with these are all called epidermal derivatives along with we have the different types of glands mammary glands sweat glands and the sebaceous gland these are all the different derivatives of the skin skin derivatives include the claws nails hairs mammary glands sweat glands and sebaceous glands so the mammary glands are found in the case of female a striking characteristic feature of mammals which is secrete the milk to feed the young ones during the early stages of development now the sweat glands and sebaceous glands are found embedded in the skin epidermis it is also a derivative of epidermis and both are responsible for regulating the body temperature the sweat glands secrete the sweat and the sebaceous glands secrete oil or oily substance called sebum now this sebum is responsible for keeping the skin always actually that is uh, uh, shining oily preventing it from its dryness so this is about the intercommunal then we have a short tail is present in the case of this animal at the posterior end of the abdomen at the posterior end of the abdomen we have a short tail now it is acting as what is called a signaling organ which gives signal to other rabbits at the time of day so it is acting as a signaling organ and normally sends message or just gives signal to other rabbits at the time of day so these are all the various components a simple external morphology of a rabbit rabbit is a true coelomic animal which encloses the body cavity called coelom normally called or simply called body cavity now the body cavity is divided into two regions one anterior thoracic cavity anterior thoracic cavity and the posterior abdominal cavity posterior abdominal cavity divided into thoracic abdominal cavity the two cavities are separated by a muscular diaphragm a muscular diaphragm so this is the most characteristic feature of the mammals all mammals are provided with a muscular partition lying between the thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity this is one of the striking characters now what is the role of this diaphragm 
the diaphragm is responsible for breathing movements. So the breathing movements are brought about by the contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm muscles. Or we can say the breathing movements are brought about by the movements of the diaphragm that plays a major role. If this diaphragm is torn, just actually puncture, there is no breathing is possible because it maintains a pressure in the thoracic cavity and its movement is responsible for the breathing movements, either inspiration or expiration. The next part of the lesson is the digestive system of rabbit. As the animal is herbivorous, it has a modified system for digesting the cellulose. Now, as a general rule, in the case of vertebrates, the digestive system consists of two components, one the alimentic canal, another one digestive glands. Now, the alimentic canal starts with the mouth ending with anus. Mouth ending with anus, the last part. So, the mouth leads into a buccal cavity. The buccal cavity is provided with the teeth and also the mouth is bounded by jaws with the legs. Now, the pharynx, the mouth, the buccal cavity leads into a muscular pharynx. The pharynx leads into a narrow footed tube, what is called esophagus. The esophagus opens into the stomach, opens into the stomach, a dilated pouch. From the stomach arises a small intestine. So, mouth, we have buccal cavity, then we have the pharynx, then we have what is called the esophagus. The esophagus leads into the stomach. The stomach is followed by small intestine. Stomach, the small intestine. The small intestine is differentiated into the first part which is U-shaped called as duodenum and the second part which is highly called what is called ileum. In the case of herbivorous animals, the small intestine is much elongated because it takes more time for the digestion of cellulose. As they are feeding on cellulose, it takes more time for the digestion of cellulose. That is why the elevated canal, that is the intestine, particularly the small intestine is more elongated. Now the small intestine is followed by large intestine. The small intestine is followed by large intestine. Now I mentioned all the small intestine is formed of a U-shaped duodenum and highly called ileum. Now the large intestine is formed of two parts. One, the anterior rectum and posterior, sorry, the anterior colon and posterior rectum, anterior colon and posterior rectum. Now the first part of the large intestine is colon, the next part proceeding from the colon is called rectum, which opens outside and is the one which is present at the base of the tip ventrally. Now, at the junction of the small intestine and large intestine, a thin wall is sac. That is called as a seca. And at the end of this side, there is a vermiform appendix. Now, what is the role of seca? Normally, in the case of vertebrates, the enzyme cellulase is absent. Cellulase enzyme, including human, the enzyme cellulase is absent for the digestion of cellulose. Even in our case also, the digestion of cellulose is brought about by bacteria, beneficial bacteria living in the large intestine or in the case of cecum. The same mechanism is also operating here. So the function of the cecum is to digest cellulose and that is being done with the help of bacteria. So cecum is a thin wall sac present in the junction of the small intestine and large intestine. It is concerned with the digestion of cellulose with the help of bacteria for living there. That's about the alimentary canal. The following on the digestive glands associated with the alimentary canal. Number one, four paths of salivary glands. Four paths of salivary glands. Open into the buccal cavity. 
we have only three types of salivary glands. Then gastric glands present in the stomach. Gastric glands present in the stomach. Then intestinal glands present in the intestinal wall. Intestinal glands. But the major glands are one liver. Another one pancreas. These two are the major glands. Now the liver is formed of four lobes. Now this is the liver. This is the liver. And it secretes a secretion called bile. The bile is stored in a sacral structure what is called gallbladder. Gallbladder. So from the liver there is a duct. Sorry, what is called the hepatic duct, and from the gallbladder there is a duct, what is called cystic duct. Both join together to common, join together to form a common bile duct. This is a bile duct, which carries a secretion namely bile from the liver to the small intestine. Then the next one, pancreas. It is a leaf-like gland located in the loop of the duodenum. Now, this is pancreas. This is pancreas. Secreting the pancreatic juice, which plays a major role in the secretion of the various food materials. So, these are all the glands present in actually the organism. Hi students, now let us talk about dentition in rabbit. What is dentition? The arrangement of teeth in the buccal cavity. You know the teeth are hard bone like structures but not made up of bone, hard bone like structures. Made up of a substance what is called dentine. The dentine is a substance that makes up a tooth. That is a, it's not a bone. Now, they are used for cutting, tearing and grinding the food materials. Now in the case of vertebrates, for example in mammals, we have two sets of teeth during development. During the early stage, even in our case also, we have milk teeth. Milk teeth. At the later stage of development, we have permanent teeth. Permanent teeth. The milk teeth are replaced by the permanent teeth. So in our lifetime too, as in the case of rabbits, two sets of teeth. Such a type of dentition where we have two sets of teeth during lifetime is called diphyodont condition or diphyodont condition. Diphyodont or diphyodont condition. Dentition or condition. Presence of two sets of teeth during development in our lifetime or in the case of rabbit, what is milk teeth, the early stages of development. Later they are being replaced by permanent teeth. Such a condition is called diffeodon dentition. If you are taking for example, actually, so here this is only mistake. So, if you are taking teeth, there are four different types of teeth. Four different types of teeth normally present in the case of vertebrates. Four different types of teeth. They are incisors used for cutting. Then, two, that is a canine teeth. They are used for tearing. But in the case of herbivorous animals, particularly in the case of rabbit, the canine teeth are absent. So here rabbit, the canine teeth are absent. Then we have the grinding teeth called premolars and then molars. Premolars and then molars. So these are all the four different sets, actually types of teeth formed at a later stage of development. That is the permanent teeth we can see are of four types. Such a presence of different types of teeth, that condition is called heterodon condition. Heterodon 
then they sin. They throw down and then they sin. Or condition. Four different types of teeth in structure and function. In the case of saw, if you are taking, all the teeth are similar. In the case of rock, if you observe the teeth, all the teeth are similar. Such a type of dentition is called homodon condition. Homodon condition in the case of shot or frog where all the teeth are similar. Now, we can represent the teeth. How many teeth are present in the case of rabbit? We can represent everything in the form of a formula. So, what is called the dental formula? Now, what is dental formula? So, the arrange, it is actually dental formula is a method of arrangement of teeth, a simple method of arrangement of teeth in a man. In dental formula, each number of tooth on one side of upper jaw and one side of lower jaw is counted. In the dental formula, each type each number, actually you can say each type of teeth whose number is represented on one side because each half of the upper jaw is a mirror image of each other. So we are counting only the number of teeth only in half of the jaw, either in the upper jaw or in the lower jaw. So if you are taking the dental formula, here the first one incisus. Incisus normally if you are taking two in upper jaw, and then one in the lower jaw. So we are representing what we can have that is in the form of numerator and denominator. The numerator represents what we have the teeth in the upper jaw. The denominator represents the teeth in the lower jaw. As per the incisus consent, I stands for incisor. There are two incisors in the upper jaw. You see that one. And one in the lower jaw. Each half. So it is represented as 2 by 1. Then we have that is canine. No canine teeth present in the case of a rabbit. See, no canine teeth. That is represented 0 by 0. Then we have premolars. In the aperture you can find there are 3 premolars. I represented you see the number 3, 3 premolars. Whereas in the case of lower jaw, we have only 2 premolars. So 3 by 2. And then, if you are taking words for the molars, and in both the cases, upper and lower jaws, both have molars 3 by 3, 1 half 3. If you are just taking the dental formula together, 2, 0, 3, 3, then 1, 0, 2, 3. So, if you mark, that means, in the case of upper jaw, we have actually 8 teeth, in one half and then six teeth in one half of the lower jaw. If it is multiplied by two, we are getting what is called actually 16, 12. So totally we have 28 teeth are present in the case of rabbit. So we are taking only one half of the upper jaw, one half of the lower jaw. So one half we have eight. So two halves we have two to eight, 16. And likewise in the lower jaw, we have one half. 1, 0, 2, 3, then actually totally 6, 2 into 6, 12. Total number of teeth in the case of rabbit, 28. This is the dental formula, a method, a simple method of arrangement of teeth of a mammal. In that one, each type, the number of each type of tooth is represented and one half, and which is being counted as what is for the number. So this is the dental formula. I mentioned already the canine teeth. Suppose we are taking, for example, in human beings, we have 32. So, if we are taking actually human dental formula, 2 by 2, 1 by 1, then we have just 2 by 2, then 3 by 3. That is equal to 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, into 2, 32 teeth. So each half of the upper jaw and lower jaw in our case, 8 teeth. So totally 16 teeth in the upper jaw and 16 teeth in the lower jaw together 32. But in the case of rabbit, the number of teeth in upper and lower jaw being different. 
upper jaw total is 16 teeth and lower jaw we have 12, a total number of 28 teeth. Then, so I mentioned about the canine teeth is abs. The space between what is called the incisors and the premolars. The space between the incisors and premolars both in upper and lower jaw is called diastema. It's a peculiar character in the case of the having. So diastema is a space present between the incisors and the premolars in the case of rabbit. So normally it helps in mastication and chewing of food. It helps in mastication and chewing of food. So these are all what we have. So the numbers represented about the premolars and the molars and also incisors two, upper jaw and here one in one in the lower jaw. I also represent the formula 2 by 1, 0 by 0, 3 by 2, 3 by 3. So totally we have 28, 16 in the upper jaw and 12 in the lower jaw.